This video brought to you in part by J&H Aerospace, your source for advanced free flight and RC airplane kits, components, and accessories. JHAerospace.com This video also brought to you by Windcatcher RC, your source for carbon fiber, EPP foam, and other RC accessories windcatcherrc.com Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, now for the moment you've all been waiting for, J&H Aerospace and Windcatcher RC present the flight of the world's largest rubber-powered airplane, the Wandering Eagle. Join us at the historic Georgia National Fairgrounds in Perry, Georgia, as we make the maiden flight of the world's largest rubber-powered airplane, the Wandering Eagle. Gotta watch out for that stab and flip you in the head. Hi, I'm Josh Finn from J&H Aerospace. I'm the creator of the Wandering Eagle, the world's largest rubber band powered airplane. I got involved in model airplanes as a kid because I'm a third generation model airplane and aviation guy. My grandpa learned to fly model airplanes with rubber band powered comet kits in the 1920s and 30s. He passed that love on to my dad because my grandpa got his pilot's license on the GI Bill coming out of World War II and became a commercial pilot. 
My dad followed in his footsteps learning to fly solo before he got his driver's license. He flew model airplanes and model rockets as a kid and that was a lot of what got him started down that road. And of course my grandpa provided the encouragement. My dad took that a step further in addition to helping out me out with model rockets and model airplanes along with my grandpa. My dad got his flight instructor rating when I was in my early teens and he leveraged that to teach me how to fly himself. I became a licensed pilot and a flight instructor. I went off to college and taught students how to fly in my spare time, paid for some of my college doing that, and in reality I could have procured a full-time job as a flight instructor instead of going off to engineering school, but that's what I did. As I progressed through engineering school, my model airplane activities really informed a lot of the engineering decisions I made in, uh, in my undergraduate work and later in the research that I did as a graduate mechanical engineering student pursuing my degree in mechanical engineering at a higher level. I spent nine years at Clemson University, so I got to graduate twice. I went off into the aerospace engineering field, still building model airplanes. And somewhere along the way, somebody called me up and asked me to design a kit for Science Olympiad competition. That took me from making little airplanes that you saw in flight test videos to making little airplanes for lots of students around the world. And now that's my full-time job, making kits for model airplanes for the next generation. One of the greatest things and the greatest pleasures of my life is the privilege of making model airplane kits which inspire the next generation of mechanical engineers and aerospace engineers and computer scientists and so on. Because that's what Science Olympiad and Technology Student Association flight competitions do for our world. I encourage you to check out the National Free Flight Society is an opportunity to pursue and explore this world of model airplanes that we do. I also encourage you to look up the Academy of Model Aeronautics, Windcatcher RC, which is our sponsor for this video, J&H Aerospace, which is my company, and everything you can find in the exciting world of model airplanes and specifically free flight competition. If you are a model airplane enthusiast, I recommend that you look up the local technology student association and science olympiad chapters at schools near you for an opportunity to share your love and your passion for your hobby with the next generation of mechanical and aerospace engineers and just average kids out there having fun with with model airplanes so why did we build wandering eagle Wandering Eagle is the world's largest rubber-powered airplane to successfully fly. It is staggering 18 feet 2 inches, and it's simply a balsa overcast. It's got a little bit of carbon in there too, but that's hidden away. That carbon is important and we can talk about it later. Windcatcher RC is your source for that material. But, back to the specs, in addition to its 18 foot 2 inch wingspan, Wandering Eagle has a wing area of 3,950 square inches. To put that in perspective, its horizontal tail has a projected area of 1,250 square inches. That number should give you pause because that's larger than most of the large radio-controlled airplanes that you'll see at your local field. To give you a little perspective, an 80 inch giant scale Piper J3 Cub is going to have slightly less wing area than that. This airplane is simply beyond imagination in its size. It has a 45 inch propeller. Most radio controlled airplanes at your local field, you know the really big ones, might have a 20 inch propeller. This is the big one. Tipping the scales at just over six pounds ready to fly, Wandering Eagle carries 18 ounces of rubber. That's one pound, two ounces. 
which means that your size extra large bag of rubber bands from Office Depot is smaller than the rubber band that powers this airplane. Speaking of that rubber, some of the people inside the hobby would cringe at me calling it a rubber band, but that's kind of what it is. But it is made of the best rubber in the world. That's FAI Tan Super Sport. Wandering Eagle is powered by 32 strands or 16 loops of 1 4th inch wide FAI Super Sport strip rubber. That rubber motor is approximately 90 inches long. That is some pretty special stuff. And we keep it lubricated with a special silicon oil that I obtained from China and that we do actually sell. It is the same stuff we use for our, all of our competition rubber powered airplanes. Wandering Eagle surpasses the 17 foot wingspan record of the previous ultimate record holder, which was the quarter scale technology demonstrator for the rubber bandit project of the 1990s. That 17 foot wingspan airplane was radio controlled. Unlike the Wandering Eagle, which Wandering Eagle has no radio control. It's on its own when we let it go, so we had to actually make it so stable that it would fly in happy little right-hand circles all on its own. Why do we call it Wandering Eagle? Well, this is the most American project imaginable, because the real fun of this is that while we are kind of hoping to get that Guinness record, if we can ever get a sanction for it, to have the world's largest rubber-powered airplane officially recognized by some entity, we're seeking after FAI records. And you see, the FAI records for rubber-powered altitude, distance, and endurance have stood since 1964, and they were set by former Soviet states. We want to bring those records to the United States. And so, this project is called Wandering Eagle because, well, the eagle, the American eagle, she has to wander around to get those records. You see, we're not seeking to simply go, you know, a couple hundred yards or 30 seconds. We want to exceed 6,000 feet little more like 6,500 feet, but give or take. And we want to exceed one hour and 41 minutes endurance. And if we ever get everything just right, we need to go after that distance record of 170 miles. Like I said, a wandering airplane. And we have to trim this free flight airplane, remember I said free flight, to actually hunt thermals. That's those little rising air currents that you see buzzards and, and hawks circling on when they're rising mysteriously in the air without flapping their wings. And this airplane is trimmed very carefully to help it seek those updrafts. That is an incredibly difficult challenge, and that's why those records have stood for 60 plus years. Join us in the journey of the Wandering Eagle. All right, so uh, we broke it. We've totally broke it. Um, yeah, the, the wing mount popped on that landing, and I'm not really surprised by that. The uh, The screws did do their, their job. This one almost sheared, and this is the bottom half of the other one, which is what we wanted. These are tiny little bolts to be holding a, a plane this size together. Uh, but that was 100 and, what did I say it was, 110? 105? Under 110, above 105, yeah. probably like um, 107, 108. Yeah, so inch ounces. Um, my arm just gave out with the side winder. We couldn't use the intercop winder because we're going to have to file uh, the sides of the um, engagement on it because it won't fit that uh, giant mess I've got on there. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you for picking air again. Always. I owe you again on picking air. So. Uh, I reckon that means we broke the world record, whatever. Qualified for the Guinness record twice because we got it to fly more than 30 seconds. On the second flight? Yeah. yeah. The first flight would have done it if, if I hadn't been panicked about the, the light pole. 
Uh, so yeah, it flies on about the power requirements I had hoped it would. Um, about the right climb rate. And it thermals. It, 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 it does hunts thermal. It hunts really well. Yeah. Uh, that what what you saw at the end there where it was uh, wandering. That's uh, people people work their lifetimes to get airplanes to do that, and this one just does out of it. the box essentially. Yeah. Uh, the only trimming we had to do was to take out some of the down thrusts, so I've got a uh, big shim right here for the down thrust. Uh, things we did find out, this spring is not strong enough, so the rundown's too long. Uh, this, oh, I've got it rubber banded. Uh, this bolt here is too weak. Um, and we have to balance so, the prop blades. Yeah, it's so. shaking. I don't know how well that came through on camera, but it's shaking pretty good on launch, and uh, that robs quite a bit of power. So that's probably 20 to 30 percent of our climb rate right there, if not more. Uh, so, and in spite of that, I mean the thing flies flies awesome. This is the coolest project ever. It's a big puppy dog, really. Yeah, it is. It's literally a giant Dawn Patrol. So thanks to Bud Romack for a continuing legacy of awesomeness. Uh, Bud, your airplane works in all sizes. So, off to Colorado. See you there. All parts, materials, and equipment used in the creation and flying of the Wandering Eagle were made possible through the sponsorship of Windcatcher RC. Windcatcher RC is our supplier for carbon fiber poltrusions that we use in our Science Olympiad and Technology Student Association competition kits. These kits have won at all levels from local to first place at the U.S. Nationals, so you know the Windcatcher RC products are top quality. They're also at the best prices. You will not find better prices, and they offer quantity discounts for large orders. Check them out at windcatcherrc.com and tell them that JNH Aerospace sent you. Thank you, Lee, for making possible my dream in this project, and we'll see you on the next one. The record attempts of the Wandering Eagle take place at Lowry Range in Watkins, Colorado, one of the most historic flying sites in the world and the largest flying field in North America. This field has been home to the magnificent mountain men since 1979. Formerly created as a bombing range, this field was turned into a missile complex for the Titan I ballistic missile program in the 1950s. The magnificent mountain men is the follow-on of the Martin Model Masters, a club which was created by employees of Martin during the construction of this Titan I complex. Today, the descendants of those Martin model masters who built this field still fly on this historic field near a Titan I complex that is visible in some of the footage. You can see the roofs of the silos off in the distance, along with some farming structures that have been erected there since the retirement of this field. We use these 440 bolts. You can see how small those are. And they're intentionally undersized so that in the event of a hard impact, they just break off, um, which, is, which is what we want because it ensures that uh, the damage is focused on the screws instead of the aircraft. So uh, what's the significance of the front of your shirt? It says 1964 with the, uh, it's crossed out. Yeah, so our, our goal is to cross out the records from 1964. So the world, the FAI world records for rubber power, um, all three of them were set in 1964. So that's altitude and endurance uh, were both set on the same flight and then distance was on a separate flight. Uh, and those were all set in the former USSR. And, and how was that different from the flights that were in the 90s? Um, so those were just largest airplane to fly uh, for, for, the, for rubber power. Um, they weren't going for distance, and they didn't get distance or altitude or endurance. They were just doing uh, proof of concept demonstration, you know, take it up there, fly it around, and land it. Uh, they could have gone after those records. I, I don't know why they didn't, but they didn't. So, we're doing it.
So uh, Josh, explain what we're doing right now. We're waiting for a thermal to come in. So and how do you know? I'm feeling for a, uh, a temperature rise, and I'm feeling for my breath to come back. No, that's not part of it, but uh, <laughs> well, I do need it to come back. We are at about 5,000 feet yeah, above 5, sea level. Above sea level, somewhere in the 9,000 range on density altitude. Oof. And after winding to 145 inch ounces, I feel it. Definitely something building down here in the valley. Yeah, something building. So what are you looking for in the valley? Um, I'm seeing heat waves coming off of the uh, off of the grass. I'm waiting to see the grass start moving a little. Um, at that point, I'll holler for Logan and we'll we'll get her airborne. You want to go now? Yeah. Is that still running? Thirty seconds.
streamer's not telling me much of nothing. Oh, well, it's telling you it's windy. <laughs> Thanks, Logan. You're welcome. Just, you know, your friendly neighborhood reminder. Okay, I'm zeroed. How are you feeling today, Josh? Well, we have literally mile-wide thermals, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, they're not real strong, so I'm just going to see what happens. I watched Don Deloach put an airplane 2,000 feet up just a few minutes ago, so... Oh, nice. We've got the lift to do it. Awesome. And it's strong. Yeah, today is day two. Josh spent uh, the evening at uh, one of the locals' workshops. Hey Josh, who who uh Bernie Olson. Oh, Bernie Olson allowed us to borrow his workshop uh, to re do the repairs on the Wandering Eagle. He is a retired Lockheed engineer and has a fantastic shop. Um, and uh, he's done cool stuff you've read about. Literally. Well, that was not the rubber band. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so we've got um a spring here for, for tension on the line to set it to ensure that it's um, taut down against the incident screw. And you can see now we've got a, a much better deployment. That's what you want to see. So this is a very simple way to do this. I don't recommend this method. However, this is a all Metal Gear servo, not just metal on the initial output. Um, and so these we use on discus launch gliders, so they're actually under tension, a little bit less than this. Um, but so this can handle that amount of tension for extended periods. Um, most servos can't. Your KSTs would be able to do this for a while. They'd start chattering eventually, which I assume this will eventually. And um, that, that's an indicator I need to put a mouse trap on it to isolate the uh, tension. But it's kind of where we are. I have taped this so that the battery can't go flying forward like it did previous episodes so hopefully that'll be good would you mind triggering it one more time for yeah. the video so we've tested the uh beacon texted all the beacons we have multiple beacons on hand two different gps ones uh one program to his armband steven has and then i have one attached to my bike with my own beacon so we also have the Walston. We verified the Walston's working. So we're set there. Yeah. Uh, can you explain to really big batteries. Can you explain to everybody what's the Walston? Uh, Walston is our directional beacon. We're non-directional non -directional beacon. And then we have the Yagi to be to make it so that we have a uh, general idea which direction it is. So um, basically, all it is is a battery plugged in and it just sends out a single beep signal. Yeah. That's consistent. And as we get closer, so, it become more consistent. Some kids, yeah, that too. Like, and then we have the RDT already set up, which is on Josh's button. Josh will be controlling that yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And I think that's pretty much it. Other than the fact that we have cameras on board. Well, a camera on board. So. Alright, what's going on? Just make sure you get 
I am going to need a rubber band to secure my prop. I forgot about that. Uh, ready? Yep. And she, there she goes. Yeah. It's fine lift. right there. back towards us a little bit. Help. Turning away. I think she's going down. Yeah. 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 I can't see, can't see it anymore. Timer started. Timer started. Go up. Up, 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 up. Come on. I think this morning we had the air to do it, but it's, it, it has cooled off a lot, and I, I'm not seeing the indications of the lift that can... I mean, we had a freaking dust devil, but it's so just so tight, you can't turn a plane that size that low in that. I don't think we're going to make this work today. Flies great, <laughs> especially if you can keep it out of sink. I mean, most of that was sink. So the problem with the dust devil is it's going up and everything around it is going down. And uh, unless you can get way up high and it widens out. Um, but I mean, it, it just, it, you can't, you're, you're literally, you have, it, it was orbiting this core and it's all going down. I mean, the plane was fighting like crazy. But you can't, out, you, you can't fight that with a, a slow airplane. Any any rubber model, they can't. They just can't do it. It's a Sunday afternoon. We got a big storm rolling in off the mountains here. It's been growing for the last few hours, and it's moving quick right now and getting big. I think we're almost done for the day. Later in the afternoon here, I think it's getting close to 3 p.m. Got the rain coming through. 
most of it's missing us. Just a lot of high winds from the storm. Gusting pretty hard here. Most of that rain went west of us. So in conclusion of this project, we pretty much can say we can check off that list, I think, that this is the largest rubber-powered airplane ever to successfully fly. And that is a very gratifying thing. We have watched in awe as this airplane rose into the sky, and there is nothing that can describe truly the feeling of seeing something you built do something like that. Wandering Eagle is a smashing success. This airplane trimmed out in two flights. To imagine a record-holding airplane of these dimensions being so easy to fly that it only took two flights to get it happily flying the way we wanted it to, that is simply stunning. Now, there have been a few issues along the way. We keep breaking propeller lock bolts and so we're going to have to address some issues there. We're also having some issues with the fuselage flexing. If you watch in some of those videos, you can see that stab swinging around a little bit. And eh, that's a little scary. Now, down to the brass tacks. We had an FAI world record sanction. We did not file for anything. So here's what went down. We simply didn't get the airplane into good enough air to get it to sustain for the long flights that we needed. Now, on day one at the Rocky Mountain Free Flight Championship, we had conditions that would have been favorable. You see, we got into that one nice thermal and got an almost three minute flight, and that felt really good, and I think the next flight would have been okay if I hadn't nearly flown the plane into a pole, and then stood it up on a wingtip trying to dethermalize it before it tried to wrap around the pole. In hindsight, letting it hit the pole would have probably been a safer outcome, but, you know, you panic in those moments. We made a little mistake, and I don't know if any of this footage is even going to make it in, but hopefully there'll be a clip to show you what uh, my long-lost Dawn Patrol looks like in the air. So here's the deal. I won three consecutive national championships with the Dawn Patrol. And when we stood the Wandering Eagle up on its wingtip and cracked that wingtip and had to go home that go to the um, to a friend's house that night and get it all fixed up, well, I figured we could simply throw the Dawn Patrol up there and go after the record. And we screwed up the radio tracking systems and we lost the Dawn Patrol. To give you an idea, the official timers lost visual on Dawn Patrol at 38 minutes. That seems like a lot, but Logan Jones was tracking the airplane directly underneath. He lost visual at about 50 minutes. Logan has good eyes, and we've kind of calibrated his eyes, so if he lost sight of the airplane directly overhead, that means it was passing about 5,000 feet, maybe more. And we know that because Logan tracked a Mulvey Hill flown by Stephen Wrigley at the Nationals up to 3,600 feet or something, some number of that nature, over 3,000 feet, maintaining visual and was able to get the airplane back. That's how Stephen got fifth place at the Nationals. So we lost sight of the plane and it happens. We were ne never able to recover the lost Dawn Patrol and on the following days, we did fly the Wandering Eagle some more. However, the conditions steadily deteriorated throughout the contest. That's okay. We did lots of flying of other things. And we got some awesome footage that y'all have been able to enjoy. So, what's that leave on the table? Well, we still got to go get those FAI records. So, we're going to regroup. We're going to rethink some things. There may be more airplanes in the future. We're definitely going to make some changes to the Wandering Eagle to push it harder. And you're just going to have to stay tuned for what's next because I am here to tell you it's about to get real in JNH Aerospace World. We'll see you on the next one and look forward to what the next adventures are for the Wandering Eagle project. 
See y'all later. This is all being documented, so you know. <laughs> My lack of mental health. So if you see this video, lack of all of our you mental health. Turn this part, like there's music playing, you know why? Yeah, this is the part to just tune out of. Lee's just gonna start playing music on this part. The circus music. Yeah. Do, 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 do.